Mr. President, welcome. Thank you for having me, Farid. When you watched the fall of Afghanistan, the fall of the Kabul government, the withdrawal of the Americans, what was your reaction in Iraq? Obviously, I was very concerned about the plight of the Afghani people. I feel for them. I know what it means to be in a situation of conflict for so long. I know the plight of refugees. I have been a refugee myself, and many Iraqis have been forced to flee their country. So I felt uh, very concerned about the plight of the Afghani people. But there was also a lesson learned from what happened there. 20 years on uh, from the American intervention and international intervention in Iraq tells you in, um, in, sorry, in Afghanistan, no matter how much international support, no, no matter how much investment is made in these situations, without legitimacy and without good governance and without support of your own population, you cannot survive. And the lesson of Afghanistan is that corruption uh, stands in the way of good governance, stands in the way of stability. And the, hopefully the lesson learned from that is that good governance should be at the heart uh, of any international engagement with any, anywhere in the world. And also the lesson for Iraq, as I was watching, it is all about us too as well. We have to claim the destiny of our uh, countries. We have to have the legitimacy, the support, uh, the tenacity to defend what is right for our own countries. We need international support. We will continue to need international support. But at the end of the day, it is about us. We need to fight for our own countries. Do you worry about America's staying power? You've, you've heard all the story, you know, the, the, the fears this shows America won't stay the course, it cuts and runs. Uh, obviously, there are lots of stories to that effect. There are lots of uh, implications to what happened in Afghanistan, and everybody has to watch very carefully. To be fair, the United States has been engaged in this war for the last 20 years or so. I can understand the uh, reasoning behind the policy, and it is not for me to question it. It is for Americans to debate that. But at the end of the day, uh, we cannot, in this part of the world, continue to blame our failures on the outside while try to claim all the successes to ourselves. And I think, I affirm, it is about us. In the case of Iraq, we have had the support of the United States and other members of the international community. We will continue to need their support uh, to develop our economy, to develop our uh, the societies for the better, but at the end of the day, we also need to move away from military uh, dynamics to one of development, to one of uh, developing our political systems based on good governance, because at the end of the day, populations in that part of the world, like those of the United States, require better schools, hospitals, dignity, rule of law, and I hope that we will do that. Do you see um, the victory of, of the Taliban uh, inspiring yes. remnants of ISIS in yes. Iraq? Yes, yes. Across the region, not just in Iraq. This must have been seen by many of these extremist organizations. Just look at the chatter on social media and others, and you'll see that many of these extremist groups uh, are inspired by what they consider to be a major victory for the Taliban against the United States. Do you think the Saudis and Iranians might restore relations diplomatically? Uh, we hope so, and uh, obviously there are impediments along the way, but uh, we hope that this will happen before too long. At the end of the day, uh, we are neighbors. We need to talk, even if we have differences. It's better to talk about differences and managing those instead of uh, staying in a state of uh, uh, disconnect, and that's not good for the region. I'm hopeful. I'm more hopeful than I have been in a, in a long time that this dynamic is changing. And at the end of the day, going back to the Afghan situation uh, and lessons learned, at the end of the day, we are the people of this part of the world. We also have to seek solutions based on our interests. Uh, in the case of Iraq, we have been a domain of conflict for regional actors and proxies that have fought along uh, uh, in, uh, on Iraqi soil with Iraqi resources and with Iraqi lives. Uh, we hope that we change this dynamic. Iraq, a sovereign Iraqi state, 
could be the common denominator of interest between the various actors, between the Iranians, the Arabs, the Turks. And for us, instead of squandering our resources over conflict, we should build infrastructure, railway, uh, gas pipelines, uh, uh, trade routes, and work together. Uh, Farid, what we have in this part of the world. Really, the problems are overwhelming. While we are so much focused on terrorism and extremism, and we need to understand where that comes from. But at the end of the day, look at the case of Iraq. We have 40 million population today. By 2050, is estimated to be 80 million. And we simply can't find jobs for our young kids with the present dynamics. The same applies to the Iranians, the same applies to the Jordanians, to the Egyptians, to other neighbors of Iraq. We need to come together. We need to build infrastructure to expand our economies, integrate our economies, focus on what matters for all of us, fighting climate change, which is impacting our lives, all our lives. We need to come together to really find ways where we deal with these issues that matter to our population, jobs, better quality of life, better schools, better health care, and to continue to be bogged down in this cycle of conflict forever uh, is not on. And also the lesson is learned. You can't wait for the others to solve it for you. We are the people of that part of the world. We really have to come up with a solution based on what is required in that region. Mr. President, pleasure to have you on.